Hi everyone, um, this is Dr. Lawrence Bello and then for this video, uh, I will be discussing the method of successive substitution for nonlinear single equations basically having single variables. So what are the conditions for this one first? The conditions such that um, you have to be able to isolate x, so x equals f of x, um, test for convergence, the first derivative of f of x with respect to x, the absolute value of that is less than 1. And then, if you choose um, any a value to be your test number and any b value to be your test number such that um, it will have an interval from a to b, if you multiply the f of a times the f of b, it should give you less than 0. Meaning, in between the two uh, two points, let's just say A is here, and then B is on this side. Um, when you multiply them, it gives you negative. It means that between them, there exists a root because the change of uh, sign is from negative to positive. So when you multiply them, it's going to be negative. And then how do you know when to stop applying the method of successive substitution? First is the absolute error. So basically, the absolute value of the uh, difference is less than the prescribed e or the error relative error so when you divide them and then it's less than the uh, e required meaning you can terminate or when the prescribed number of iterations has been reached so if for example for number one if you are given solve for the root of x cubed minus 3x plus 1 equals 0. So basically, this is your f of x. f of x is x cubed minus 3x plus 1 equals 0. And then, um, you would choose, of course, what values you would want to test. I think it's best to test 0 and 1. That's the easiest. So for this one, I would test um, for the possible root in the vicinity of 0 and 1. So, I would test first um, for the changes in sign, such that f of a times f of b should be a negative number. Um, and then, whatever that value I had in mind between a and b, um, I would make that my first assumption. And then, of course, um, to know when to stop, I have to test for convergence. And then, basically, that's the method of substitution. I'll be showing you how to solve in a while. So, for for example, this one. Earlier, you were given um, x cubed minus 3x plus 1 equals 0. You have to first tr be able to transform it into a simpler, um, not necessarily simpler, but then into another form wherein you can isolate one of the x's. So, in this case, it would be easier for me to isolate the x of the second term because it's linear therefore if i would if i were to isolate that x that's going to be x equals one third quantity of x cubed plus one so earlier um the example that we had that i gave was this one x cubed minus three x plus one equals zero so that means um we'll test um the vicinity of the roots so I nominated earlier 0 and 1 as two possible roots. So when I plug in 0 in the function of x, it was able to give me 1, positive 1. And when I tested 1, it gave me negative 1. Such that when I multiplied the two functions, it gave me a negative number. Meaning what did it prove? It, it proved that there exists a root between or in the interval from 0 to 1. So that means we can try any number between them. So my first guess that I used was 0 0.5. So remember earlier I said um, isolate x such that um, you can solve for the next possible root. So in this case, I isolated um, the linear x and gave me one third quantity x cubed plus 1. So what I would do is get the, the first derivative of this one with respect to x and then plug in the value that I had. So 
after isolating, it, it's going to give you 3x squared. So basically, it's just x squared. When you plug in x equals 0 0.5 squared, you'll be able to get 0 0.25. And one of the termination criteria that I gave earlier was such that whatever you have here, the answer should be less than 1. So meaning, the iteration method wherein x sub 0, the first trial number, is 0 0.5, will converge to one of the roots of the given equation. So let's try. Um, when I have 0 0.5 here, and I plug in 0 0.5 in the given function there, I'll be able to get 0 0.375. And then for a method of successive substitution, whatever y you have, you will plug in as x to be used as x in the next uh, in the next step. So since this is the guess, I would assume this to be zero iteration. The first iteration is the first step after your first guess. So if I plugged in 0 0.375 in this, it would give me 0 0.3509. And then plugging it back in. So basically the x the y result here will be the new excess, if you can notice. And then, again earlier, uh, when do we know if it's time to stop? As I said in my presentation, it depends on the termination criteria. If the absolute error is less than whatever error is given, if the relative error is less than whatever error is given, or after a prescribed number of iterations. So, for example, if I say stop when the error is um when the error is less than 0 0.00001 or basically it's exact up to the fourth decimal place so maybe we can look at which one would have exactly four decimal places and then the next number the fifth decimal place would be the one that's different so earlier um in the notes, I showed you how to solve how to solve it manually. So in this case, I set up a table. So the table would be x sub n, and then the function f of x sub n, and then the absolute error, basically the difference. So this one, or sometimes some people, you know, don't place any number here yet. So basically, we fill out this table. So how do we do that? Use, let's use Excel working. So let's use Excel here. Um, for this one, um, this was the given example. And then that's basically the f of x. I isolated the x. So if we try 0 0.5 here, let's plug in the function. So basically, that one is this raised to the third power um, plus 1 divided by 3. So 0 0.375 would be the first answer. And then you have to take note that the first iteration would be equal to the previous y. And then just drag this. This one would take whatever value here is. And then this is basically just the difference between um, this line and then the top line. So earlier, as I said, um, if I were to take if I were to take um, up to four decimal places exact, let's see, up to the fourth decimal place, so that means this one would hold true. So one, two, three, four, because this one is, the error is on the fifth decimal place. So that means this one would be the one I would select. So if I ask you, how many iterations did it take for me to get the final answer? The answer is four iterations. So some of you might ask, um, since the original given function is x cubed, shouldn't there be three um, roots? Yes. However, for the one that you tried earlier, um, you may only be able to get one root. So what you do is, to find the other roots, express x in other forms. So since the original given function is this, Maybe you can uh, isolate one of the x's here and then make it the cube root of 3x minus 1. Or, so for that one, 
you'd be able to get one answer, which is this one. Or maybe also, what you could do is um, try looking for other test values. So if you have some questions, I'm here. Just please comment on the video. Thank you very much.